heartbroken. A tree full of memories and ornaments now left scattered on the ground. You know, this is not a place to destroy. It's a place for remembering beautiful things. Look out below. And when those connect, it, it, it should go like that. That's both of our expectations. A pickup truck towers above the rims as two companies team up for a unique recovery mission. Hi, Cross. How are you today, kiddo? And always keeping a watchful eye. That's my life. I, you know, keep busy, <laughs> keep you young. <laughs> This week's Super Senior, always caring for our future generations in more ways than one. The MTN 530 News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for starting your week with us. I'm Russ Riesinger. And I'm Andrea Lutz. A tree in Rose Park, it's been vandalized, but it's far from your average tree. It is a memorial tree, and it's dedicated to families who have lost children. Well, this particular one containing several ornaments now broken on the ground after someone destroyed the tree's branches. Our Haley Monaco reports it's an incident that's left one family devastated. Here at Rose Park, there are a number of trees that have very special meaning. So when damage like this happens, it's heartbreaking. We planted this tree nine years ago when we lost our daughter. A parent should never have to experience losing a child. Well, my daughter was beautiful. <laughs> she had a very complicated medical history and she had a liver transplant at 27 years old and several other complicated medical issues and one day we just lost her. But for Shirley Abbey, being able to come to Rose Park to decorate the tree dedicated to her late daughter Trisha was just one way to keep her memory alive. This is a very important place for people, you know, and maybe people don't understand what this is. The Compassionate Friends Billings chapter offers support for families after a child's death and has a local flower garden and life brick walkway within the sculpture garden at the park. You know, this is not a place to destroy, it's a place for remembering beautiful things. But Shirley was left devastated when she discovered that her daughter's tree was vandalized with branches torn off and decorations scattered around. Hopefully this tree survives. It's very special important. You know, I have no idea who a lot of these people are. I don't have a clue. But to see them destroyed like that is just, it's, it's saddening. Roger Crabtree is a member of the Neighborhoods Watch program and walks around the area nearly every day. Taking it upon ourselves to try to change things in our neighborhood. From windows broken, items stolen. It happens a lot, a lot more than what you'd think. And now this, Crabtree is frustrated and wants to see a change, not just for his neighborhood, but for the families just trying to honor their loved ones. You know, these are people's families and friends that they're remembering, and it's just, it's unnecessary to destroy it. Just let it be. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. From the ground and the air, two Billings businesses joining forces for a unique recovery effort. Take a look at this, a Billings Flying Service helicopter and a crew from Hansers lifting that pickup driven off the rims a few weeks ago. All right, Charlie Kleps takes us inside this interesting rescue mission. It was quite the spectacle on the rims Monday morning as the Billings Flying Service partnered with Hansers to pull this truck, which had driven off of the rims five weeks ago, out of the area it had landed. What first began as a quiet, peaceful Monday morning was quickly interrupted as the turbulent sounds of an approaching helicopter filled the air. It's cool to be a part of something like that. That helicopter belongs to the Billings Flying Service and was a part of a mission to pull this truck out from beneath the Billings rims. We just set the hook down to them, they grabbed it and hooked onto it and walked away and we pulled tension and lifted it up. As unusual as this site may seem, Crew Chief Ty Parsons says his team is used to rescues like this. And down on the ground, it's also a familiar operation for the team at Hansers Automotive. There's a lot of preparation behind the scenes. Hansers has helped coordinate dozens of recoveries like this. You know, it's important that that truck comes up level so fluids don't leak out. And even some more complex ones, like this one earlier this year in Livingston, where they towed a jet from a ravine. Difficult work that crews make look easy. In less than five minutes of flying, this mission was accomplished. Yeah, you couldn't ask for a better job. 
went really smooth. The traffic was stopped for about four or five minutes is all, and the whole thing is, is that quick. You know, the problem with a, a, a whole ordeal like this is there's tragedy on the other end that leads to it, so, you know, we keep all those people in our thoughts as well. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. There's another big shakeup in leadership inside Montana's largest hospital. Logan Health and Billings Clinic CEO Craig Lambrecht has resigned as leader of the combined organization. Lambrecht has only held that role since last September when the two health organizations merged into one entity. He did not provide a reason for his departure. Dr. Clint Seeger, who is the, currently the chief physician executive of Billings Clinic, will serve as co-CEO of the combined health system until a replacement can be hired. Look at high temperatures today show anywhere from 44 in Butte all the way to 62 for you in Sheridan this afternoon. A lot of 50s across the eastern plains. So take a look at some of the pictures. There's part of the reason it was cooler in Missoula today. You can see the uh, cloud cover that's still hanging around with some light rain showers holding the readings into the 40s for this afternoon. A look towards Butte now sitting at 43, but the clouds again were a big factor and those clouds will continue to move over our direction. In fact, they held back the temperatures a while for Billings as well. Over towards Bozeman you can see some snow up into the mountains with temperatures in the low 50s today. We had a little break of sun and a bit of a breeze from time to time. To shift the uh, view over now as we get into Great Falls where they have some clouds and setting at 51 degrees. Then by the time we start looking, uh, well, I was hoping Miles City was going to show up here. There they are with the sunshine. The temperatures warmed up and we're at 57 degrees. Warmer in the eastern plains, but it won't last. Details coming up. The Billings Fire Department showed up and showed out at the Columbia Tower Stair Climb in Seattle this weekend. That annual event is a fundraiser for the Leukemia Foundation. Firefighters raced to climb 69 flights of stairs or more than 1,300 steps to the 73rd floor of the Columbia Center. This year, the Billings Fire Department sent 11 firefighters to the stair climb and came in 19th overall out of 310 teams. The department's lone female climber, Hallie Evanson also placed eighth in the women's category. Billings Fire Department collected over $12,000 for cancer research and awareness. We've been getting some great nominations for our Super Senior segment, and tonight it's time to meet another. Jean Fangsrud wears a lot of hats. In fact, just about every weekday you can find her volunteering, making a difference right here in her community. Super Seniors is sponsored by the following partners. As a new school day dawns, Good morning. How are we today? you'll find Jean Fangsrud making sure the children at St. Francis make it inside safely. I love those kids. They're just my, they're my little buddies. Hi, Chris. How are you today, kiddo? Serving as a crosswalk guard is just one of her volunteer jobs. I get paid in hugs. I'm a volunteer. I don't get a salary from there, but I get paid in hugs. So. An hour later, Jean is busy inside the St. Vincent Hospital gift shop where she also volunteers. She's got a lot of energy. She's almost like an energizer bunny. She just keeps going and going. That's my life. I, you know, keep busy, <laughs> keep you young. <laughs> Before she retired, Jean spent 30 years working in the banking industry. She's now been volunteering here at St. V's for about seven years. What I wanted to do rightfully is they were advertising the paper to hold babies. Well, I had 400, 400 applicants and my name wasn't picked. <laughs> darn but I got a lovely letter from the current vol the, from the volunteer coordinator saying there was other opportunities so I thought I'll call she's made my job so easy in that um, with the, the gift shop she we co buy we um, find things together uh, so it's, it's really nice to have her part of the gift shop and part of our volunteer program. And Jean did eventually get her chance to hold those babies. Along with working in the gift shop, she now also volunteers one day a week in the NICU. Oh, I got to hold some of those babies, and I'll tell you, it's my therapy. You go up there, and it's just those little ones, you know, you get those little teeny tiny ones, and you just, they're just... They're just so vulnerable, but they're just the sweetest little things ever, and they're just, you know, that holding them will make their life a little bit easier. Ba babies that are in the NICU that are cuddled on a, on a daily basis are out of the NICU on average 15 to 18 days sooner than they would normally. So, I mean, we're there to t take care of those little people. Just some of the ways this super senior is making a difference in her community. 
And if you'd like to nominate someone for our Super Senior segment, you can do so by clicking on the Super Seniors tab. It's right at the top of our website, ktbq.com. Tonight, Billings City Council is set to act on the Rockman Project. It's a seven-story Marriott Hotel that includes Park 3, which is currently attached to City Hall. The $33 million Rockman Project will construct a new hotel with 140 room capacity to go on 2nd Avenue North and North 27th Street. The current Rockman building will be demolished. While City Hall is not slated for immediate redevelopment, the owners of that project plan to purchase the Park 3 garage for the hotel guests and acquire the City Hall building. Well, the council is set to vote on a request for TIF financing. Still to come on the MTN Find 30 News on Q2, four miles every four hours for 48 hours. The U.S. Army gets started on a unique challenge as they look to bring in more Native American recruits. That story next. Later in sports, the Big Sky Tournament is off and running in Boise. We'll have highlights as the Grizz and Cats women look to punch a ticket to the big dance. The MTN 530 News continues right after this. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 530 News. The Army is looking to attract more Native American recruits. It's something they believe is untapped in its demographic. And as Arlena Howder explains, this recruitment coincides with the Goggins Challenge, walking four miles every four hours for 48 hours. Walking 48 miles in 48 hours isn't easy, especially carrying a 35 pound ruck on your back. But that's exactly what Billings Army Recruitment is doing here at Hardin High as part of the Goggins Challenge. It's just one of several schools they're visiting, but they're hoping to tap into Montana's Native American population. Oh, it's a challenge. Yeah. These Hardin High kids aren't drilling. Not bad. Although they might be in the future. We wanted to incorporate our local schools and get students, faculty, staff, um, interested in participating as well. These students are walking for the Goggins Challenge. Doesn't hurt to try. Keeping Sergeant First Class Caleb Bright and Staff Sergeant Kyle Munez company as they walk four miles every four hours for 48 hours. It's going to be 12 stops total. Hardin was their first stop of several schools, hoping to give these kids a taste of what a future in the Army might look like at a time when recruitment is a challenge. According to the Department of Defense, military services collectively missed recruiting goals by about 41,000 recruits in 2023. I like running and yeah. I think doing it for the Army would be pretty fun. Luckily, they're in the right place. Native Americans have the highest per capita enrollment in the U.S. military, five times the national average. <laughs> My brother wanted to try to go to the military ever since we were little, so he left and now it's my turn. I feel like when I get older, I could be like one of these guys and come over here. It's a future these kids are considering, especially after walking a mile in these recruiters' shoes. We got pushed out of our lands and stuff. So, you know, I got to at least try to do something to fight for, for it, too. In Hardin, Alina Howder, MTN News. It yeah, joins us again, a warm start to our week. That's right, a beautiful start as well. Take a look at this one from Bob. You got everything working here, the clouds that formed as the strong winds. You can see the crazy mountains off into the background. It kind of looks like <laughs> picture perfect. Oh. Yeah, doesn't it? It may not be as calm as a Bob Ross landscape as we get into the rest of the week. We'll take a look at that when we come back. The MTN 530 News continues right after this.